Welcome back to GMBN, everybody. Today, we're going to be embarking on a new series. But what is that series, I hear you ask? Well, this is episode one of Bikes of Enduro. We're going to be taking a look at some of the fastest riders and the fastest bikes out there, giving you guys an in-depth look at the rides that are beneath them, taking them to these top spots. Now, to kick it off, we have a few very fast people for you. None other than Sam Hill, EWS overall winner from 2019, Isabeau Corduria, also 2019 overall champion, and the shredder that is Martin Mays. Now, it's worth noting that these guys are full factory riders, and sometimes they ride a multitude of bikes throughout the year, including prototypes or adaptions of current bikes that they're on. So we're going to be taking a look at the bikes that they used the most. Let's kick things off then with that man, Sam Hill. Now, not much of an intro needed here. Three-time EWS champion and all-round shredder. Sam is an absolute weapon on a bike. Now, he has ridden smaller wheel sizes in the past. This was the first full year he'd done the uh, big wheels, if you like. Now, there were a few different colour options that Sam rode, but we're going to be focusing on the Ferrari red version that he rode in the Trophy of Nations at the end of the season. Now, Sam chooses to ride a size medium mega uh, with a reach of 450 millimetres. The head angle of the bike is 64 degrees, and you can just tell from looking at it that this bike is built to take on the rowdiest of terrain. On suspension duties on the bike is a RockShox Lyric Ultimate up front with that beautiful Charger 2 damper. And Sam opts for a whopping 180 millimetres of travel. On the back is a RockShox Super Deluxe with 160 mil of travel. Um, and again, that has got the larger air can on it. As far as wheels goes, Chain Reaction Team is also sponsored by Mavic. So no surprise that there are the Mavic D-Max wheels on his bike. And of course, if you're that man, three-time champ, you're gonna have your own custom touches. And you can see he's got the Day of the Dead graphics. This comes from a bike he used in the past, which is carried over. Um, and bloomin' do they look nice. The D-Maxes have a 30 millimeter internal width. So the tires that Sam chooses to run on this is a Michelin DH22 on the front in a 2.4. That is the downhill casing, super tacky compound for maximum grip. Out back, things are a little different. Again, it's a 2.4, but he chooses to run a Michelin Wild Enduro. And these are a slightly firmer, quicker rolling tire. Um, again, with a, a solid casing on them to avoid any punctures. And inside those tubeless setup tires are the Nukeproof Ard system. That's like an insert that they'll use just to help protect the rim from any big impacts, which unfortunately at this level of racing is inevitable. So when it comes to gearing, what does one of the fastest guys on the planet use? Well, it's the full SRAM Axis wireless group set, 12 speed, of course. Now, there's some clever little touches here. On the mech at the back, Sam's mechanic has put a tiny bit of Gorilla Tape over the battery casing. Now that's not normally needed, but obviously on the rowdiest of terrain out there and under one of the rowdiest riders, it's just that extra little bit of security. You don't want to clout it on a rock and lose that battery and then, well, you're scuppered with shifting, aren't you? So these guys will often do these little extra bits and pieces just to help secure the bike and make them sturdy for the long run. Also, interestingly, there's a slight cutaway on Sam's shifter. Now, that's just to help, I guess, with ergonomics. Obviously, the way that his thumb sort of pushes and presses on it to get it in the most comfiest, nicest position and feel, there's just some of the, uh, the shifter shaved away there. Also, up on the cockpit is, of course, all Sam Hill custom stuff. A 760 mil bar is held in place by a 50 mil stem, which is the normal go-to numbers for Sam. That's just how he likes to run it. And some super tacky Sam Hill signature grips. Um, interestingly, another contact point, flat pedals. Obviously one of the few riders out there that races on flats. And would you look at the size of the pins in them? There's definitely no chance of slipping a prototype pedal there. So then, this is the latest in a long line of custom Sam Hill bikes. And it's interesting to see that racers are always striving to find those extra seconds and advantages where they can. So really looking forward to seeing what bike is gonna be coming out next for Sam. Next up is French shredder Isabeau Corduria. 
The French rider has been in a long battle with Cécile Ravenel over the years, but 2019 was finally her season to take the overall and win every single round along the way. Isabeau used several different bikes throughout the 2019 season, including two different wheel sizes and a completely different prototype bike at the end of the season. But we're going to be focusing on the bike she used the most, which is an intense carbine 29er. Now, Isabeau rode a small carbine, which is the smallest size they do. It's got a 410 mil reach and a 65 and a half degree head angle. Perfect for Isabeau's smaller stature. Up front is 160 millimeters of travel, courtesy of a RockShox Lyric Ultimate. Again, with that Charger 2 damper. Out the back, 155 mil of travel from a RockShox Super Deluxe, both of which have been tuned by SRAM, especially for Isabeau. I guess being a lighter rider, your suspension has to be a little bit differently set up. For both tyres, she's opted for Hutchinson's hard skin sidewalls, which are the burliest of sidewalls, opting that, you know, weight doesn't really matter when it comes to puncture resistance, and inserts are also put in both tyres. What are these tyres on, I hear you ask? Well, again, like Sam, it's Mavics and the D-Max. Like I said, with the 30mm internal rim width, she likes the way the tyres come up on these and also the rigidity and firmness of these wheels mean that they are nice and responsive and zero flex. Now the cockpit, not one to be too fussy throughout the season. The only thing that will generally get changed is potentially a spacer underneath the stem should the tracks get steeper. However, one thing she is fussy on, brakes. Her poor mechanic Cedric often has a little bit of a to and fro, shall we say, as she likes her brakes up in a very particular way, and that is with very little movement and not pulling all the way into the bar. Bars, stem, and grips are all courtesy of Renthal, and she opts for an aluminium bar for reliability over the weight savings of a carbon bar. And basically, that's because if you crash, you know where you stand with an aluminium bar, you don't know if you've cracked a carbon bar. So when the series title's on the line, she just wants to finish. Another rider to adopt SRAM's wireless axis group set then. Preferring this over a conventional group set as she says she likes the direct and instant gear changes. One place where SRAM's axis is missing though is the dropper and that is because on such a small frame uh, under full compression the battery basically buzzes on the tyre and obviously can rip that battery out so that's no good and she doesn't want that. So she has a reverb stealth there instead. The brakes that she's chosen to use for the season are SRAM code brakes. Those are mounted up to 200mm rotors front and back using organic pads. As she says, she prefers the feel of them over a more metallic pad. I guess that can be personal preference and maybe something that changes from time to time on the course. Again, like I said, so these are big rotors, big powerful brakes, and the most particular thing on her bike is how that lever feel is set up, which she likes to have the same every single time. So after an incredible 2019 season where she did win every single round and the overall, her partnership with Intense is done. Isabeau is now, for this season, on Lapierre. Will we see her have the same success? Who knows, but it's going to be exciting to find out when the races do kick off. Best of luck. Last and by no means least is Martin Mays then. Let's find out a bit about Martin. So firstly, Martin is riding a GT Force Pro in a size large. Now that has a reach of 450 mil with a head angle of 65 degrees, although this one actually has a head angle probably more like 64 degrees. But let's come into that a bit later. Now, suspension duties are taking care of Fox all round with a 36 up front and the Float X2 out back. How much travel is Martin running? Well, less than most actually, with 150 mil front and rear. The reason Martin does this is he opts for function over fashion, if you like, saying that it's much better to have 150 mil that works properly than just adding more travel onto the bike and you know not having it work quite as well, potentially, and using it just to get away with stuff. He much more prefers the feel of that responsive, slightly shorter travel, playful bike. Now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting on Martin's bike. Now this bike, if you were to look at it on the GT website, comes stock as a 29er. However, if we take a look at Martin's, he's actually running a 650B wheel on the back. The reason for this is that Martin says the larger wheel on the front, he feels gives him good grip and you know stability in the corners and, and being able to push that front end down. But paired up with a slightly shorter and smaller wheel on the back, 
actually allows for a little bit of playfulness at the back end being able to move it around. This of course also slackens out that stock head angle. So where it would be a 65 degree head angle with 29 front and rear, because he's running that slightly smaller back wheel, it actually rakes out that front end to about 64 degrees. Nice and stable. Now it's not just two different wheel sizes, there's actually two different rims that Martin is using. Up front is a Stans Flow Mark III, out the back is a Stans Flow EX3. Now the reason for that is the fr it keeps the front end a bit lighter using a slightly lighter rim, but the more burly rim out back, again, it's all about being able to take those impacts and just a slightly stronger rim gives him that peace of mind that he can hammer through those sections. Combined with the cush core out back as well, it really means that you can hammer through those sections without any worry at all. With tyre selection then, it's no less ordinary as Martin often likes to run a cut down spike on the rear. Now that's usually a Schwalbe Dirty Dan with the centre knobs chopped down. Reason for this, he loves the grip and feel of it, but having that cut down still gives him some of that rolling speed, so it's not the full drag of a proper mud tyre. Now this is something that he's done from a very early days, back when it was uh, GT and Atherton racing. It's something that Dan's probably installed in him along the way and he's just gotten used to it and really likes the feel of it. Up front is a Schwalbe Magic Mary, both of which are 2.5 in the downhill Addicts casing. Gearing is taken care of then by someone different this time. This is a full Shimano setup with a new XTR 12 speed. A 32 tooth chainring up front held in place nicely by a little E13 chain guide for that extra security that that chain can't hop off anywhere. Interestingly for braking, it's also done by Shimano's XTR 4 pot brakes, but unlike many other racers opting for the biggest rotor they can, Martin uses a 180 mil rotors front and rear. Again, when asked about this, Martin said it's basically down to feel. He's not a big heavy breaker, so he doesn't drag the brakes, they don't heat up a lot. They're either on or they're off. Most of the time I should imagine they're off, but uh, it means that you can get away with a smaller rotor and obviously they're those vented rotors as well, so they keep nice and cool. Right then, finishing touches. There's a Fox Kashima coated transfer dropper with a fabric saddle, 150 mil drop. Up front in the cockpit, we've got a 50 mil Raceface Atlas stem paired with a 760 mil Raceface Atlas bar. Another neat little touch, which a lot of racers do uh, in various different ways, is that Martin uses the one-up EDC tool tucked inside of his steerer tube, just so that he's got that multi-tool to hand for whenever it should be needed. Finally, when it comes to overall setup, Martin knows what he wants and how he likes to use it. Maybe not a particularly fussy rider, but he knows the parts he likes and likes to stick to those, hence like the cut down spike and the 180mm discs for example. Now when EWS races come down to only seconds nowadays, I guess knowing what works and what you're comfortable with is really important. Thanks for watching episode one of Bikes of Enduro then everyone, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Uh, it's been great looking at details of some of these guys and girls bikes. Now for episode two, drop in the comments who you would like to see uh, bikes featured and we'll see if we can get them on. Um, and in the meantime, thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you again. Cheers.